The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you for joining today's online travel presentation, where we uncover everything you need to know about Canada Rail Vacations. My name is Lynn, and I am pleased to be one of your hosts. Before we begin, I'd like to quickly take care of a little housekeeping. First, we will hold all questions until the end. If you have questions during the presentation, please go ahead and type them in the question box in the GoToWebinar toolbar, and we will cover them at the end of the webinar. And second, there's going to be two polling questions during the presentation, and we encourage you to participate. So now let's get started. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Lynn, your presenter from Vacations by Rail, and I am pleased to introduce our special guest, Ryan Robutka from Via Rail Canada. So I'm so excited for you to meet Ryan and learn about amazing aspects of a Canada Rail vacation. But before we dig into all of that good, good information that Ryan's going to share with you, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Vacations by Rail. So we are... Um, North America's leading rail vacation company. We um, are the trusted authority on rail with the largest collection of vacations to destinations around the globe. The cornerstone of each itinerary is a rail journey aboard at least one iconic train. Now, Vacations by Rail is a great rail journeys company, which means we're backed by more than 45 years of experience in the specialty of global rail tours. And we are a member of the National Tour Association, American Bus Association, and we are AARP's preferred rail provider. And in addition to unmatched vacations, we offer best-in-class customer care from your first call or email to your return from your trip. So why take a rail vacation in Canada? Now, whether this is your first Vacations by Rail webinar or you're a veteran attendee, the top reason is not going to be a surprise. It's a great way to get a new perspective on the region through which you're traveling. This is experiential travel at its very best. But in Canada, it's more than just that. It's an easy destination to travel to by air from many U.S. gateways and even by train from the east and west coasts. And once you're in Canada, the variety of vacation options are really incredible. Do you want a classic overnight rail experience to the lakes and mountains? You've got it. Are you interested in connecting historic and cosmopolitan cities? Not a problem. There are so many variety of destinations and experiences from coast to coast that caters to really just about everyone. The people are warm and welcoming. The cu cuisine is just delicious. The excursions are memorable and the trains offer distinctive and memorable experiences. And speaking of that, our well-planned itineraries are packed with quality inclusions, ranging from iconic train journeys and centrally located hotels to comprehensive sightseeing and authentic experiences. So that's a little bit about Vacations by Rail. So I want to kick things off now with a poll. And it is, have you taken a vacation in Canada? So I've gone ahead and launched that. And we'll leave this open for about 30 seconds. All right, we're gonna go ahead and close this. It looks like just about everyone has had a chance to cast a vote. And Ryan, 78% of our attendees have not taken a train journey in Canada. So I would say that you're in the right place to learn everything you need to know about a Canada rail vacation. So with Sounds that- Sounds like it, let's take that. Yeah, so um, with that, I'm gonna turn everything over to Ryan. All right, thanks very much, Lynn, and, and good morning, everybody. Thanks for, for joining us today. Um, I'm going to take you on a, a quick uh, little tour of Canada by, by train and, and show you some of the routes and experiences that we offer um, that are very well complemented by uh, the Vacations by Rail team and the great itineraries that they build and make it really so easy to come up to Canada and explore the different parts of the country uh, that we travel through. So uh, before I Show you the route. Um, 
There we go. All right. Just a little bit about uh, who or what Via Rail is. So uh, we're Canada's passenger railway system uh, offering um, passenger service to Canada and its visitors across 10 different provinces that stretch from the shores of the Pacific, the Arctic and the Atlantic Ocean over 12 and a half thousand kilometers of track. And we use both short and long distance trains to provide the perfect opportunity to experience all of Canada's scenery, uh, to see the different destinations and regions that we, uh, that we have to offer from the comfort of the trains and the hospi hospitality of, of our crews. So we look forward to welcoming you on board, whether that be uh, this coming winter or during the summer or fall of next year or even into the future beyond that. Before I get into the, the fun stuff, uh, I just want to talk really briefly about what we're doing from the perspective of COVID to make sure that uh, our passengers and our crew are safe at all times. And, and um, there are a few different initiatives that the federal government has implemented that uh, we uh, are following from a service perspective. And uh, just to let you know, you know, from the enhancement, uh, for, sorry, from the perspective of enhanced cleaning and air filtration, we've made sure that we've upgraded the, the systems that we have within our train sets and our cars to make sure the air is as uh, purified and filtered as possible. We do have physical distancing in our stations and on our platforms. Mask wearing is mandatory. Uh, anytime you're on board any of our trains, except for when you're eating or drinking or in a private cabin uh, on our long distance trains. And those uh, mask wearing mandates would also include any time you're in our stations and on the platforms prior to boarding. And it's important to note that there is a mandatory vaccination policy right now in place for travel anywhere in Canada when you're on a train or a plane. And that is a federally mandated um, uh, initiative. And I think at this point, when we look to 2022, it makes sense to assume that those um, same uh, uh, mandatory uh, vaccination and mask wearing initiatives will be in place as we work our way through 2022 and hopefully through the last few months of whatever the pandemic has in store for us. All right. Sorry, I think there's a bit of a delay here. So uh, the network, uh, this would be a, an overview of all of the different routes that we operate across Canada. And as I mentioned, we operate from the Pacific Ocean up into the Hudson's Bay or Arctic Ocean and the Atlantic Coast and the Maritimes. I'm going to spend my time focusing on three different routes today, and that would be the Canadian, which is our red line, making up a, a four night journey between Toronto and Vancouver, the corridor section of Southern Ontario and Quebec which makes up the service connecting Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec City. It's the busiest part of the network that we operate. And then also the Eastern long distance train, which we call the Ocean. And before I get to the next slide though, and I'm not gonna spend any time on the route that runs up to Churchill uh, in the presentation, but some of the equipment that we operate on other trains is also the same equipment and experience that you'll have on the train to Churchill. But I know that later on, Lynn will be talking about Churchill as a destination. And we offer a two day trip, two day, two night trip from Winnipeg. It travels through the Canadian Prairie and then into the Canadian Shield and Boreal Forest before making its way into the southern part of the Arctic in Churchill. And Churchill is a phenomenal destination to experience at different times of the year. In the fall, it's a great time to visit the polar bears and, and see the polar bears that are congregating around Churchill before they go out into. Uh, the, the Arctic for the winter months. In the summer, you can visit and, and have an intimate experience with beluga whales. And then also during the winter period is a great time to check out the Northern Lights. So that is one of the more uh, remote or regional services that we offer and uh, Lynn will have more information on that shortly. So just to start off, I wanna talk about the corridor. And this is the busiest uh, section of the country that we would operate in. A lot of people are using the train in this part of uh, Canada to really use as tra transportation. And that would be done to connect, as I mentioned, some of the major cities uh, of Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec City. But it also does a great job connecting smaller communities in, in this part of the country 
And uh, the corridor would stretch all the way from Quebec City right down to the US-Canada border in Windsor. So I mentioned uh, we, we travel through Toronto. So this would be one of the two major uh, terminuses that uh, make up this region. So we've got the CN Tower. And the great thing about traveling in the corridor is all of our stations, the majority of the stations are located right in the downtown core. So you can go from downtown Toronto to downtown Montreal and the stations are located right in the heart of the city. Now, traveling in the corridor isn't just about going from one community to the other. And like all of the other trains that we operate across the country, uh, the corridor also will showcase some of the, the, the beautiful scenery that makes up Southern Ontario and Southern Quebec. So you'll have an opportunity to get away from the busy highways and be more in the rural country landscapes that we would see here. Um, traveling across some of the major rivers in the area or along the shorelines of Lake Ontario uh, provides very dramatic um, opportunities to see some unique scenery. Depending on the time of the year you're traveling, the fall scenery and the fall foliage is a, is a, is a major draw for passengers traveling from a leisure perspective in October and in November. And then also some of the different stations that uh, in, uh, encompass the, the corridor region where we have a very unique architecture. Some of these stations go back to the late 1800s, early 1900s. This is a shot of the station in Quebec. So um, the corridor does really showcase this part of the country very well. And the corridor itself, in terms of the service we offer, there's two options. We have business class and economy class. And if you can, um, treating yourself to, to business class is a great way to spoil you and your travel companions while you're making your way through this region. And business class includes a number of different um, elements that make up what I think is um, our best service for sure in the corridor region. So to start off the journey, you'll have access to in-station business lounges with complimentary newspapers, magazines, non-alcoholic beverages, and Wi-Fi. We offer priority boarding to our business class passengers with advanced seat selection and free baggage. The great part about the service on board the train is that it does include a hot meal served to your seat, which includes all beverages, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, much roomier seats, and the ability to seat different sized groups together when traveling on board. Just a couple of pictures to show you what our business class section of the train would look like. And again, this is specific to the corridor routes that we offer in Southern Ontario and BC. So very spacious seating, and we have single seating on one side of the train and also uh, dual seating on the other side. Uh, at the forefront of this picture, you can see there is a, a table there. So this is a section where we can see maybe a family of four or a larger group traveling together. The meal service, without a doubt, is a big part of the overall experience. So whether you're traveling in the morning, we'll have breakfast, lunch would be served in the afternoon and dinner in the evening. And as I mentioned, it always comes inclusive of a variety of different types of beverages. Now, not to be missed when traveling, uh, sorry, last uh, picture here also, is our business class lounges. So this is a shot of the lounge in Toronto. So it's a, it's a nice quiet area to get away from the hustle and bustle of the, the overall station environment that we would have in the different stations in this region. Um, so complimentary coffee, there's tea, juice, and snacks available here. This is also the same business class lounge that our passengers departing Toronto for Western Canada on the Canadian would also have a chance to use. So from here, they would have direct access to the platforms to uh, board the various trains that uh, people would be traveling on in and out of Toronto. The other class of service that we have would be economy class. So economy class offers really, really good value. Um, there still is a lot of comfort traveling in economy class, especially when you compare any seat on a train compared to any seat on a plane. Uh, you don't have to worry about having your seat or your, your knees crammed into your, your chest or anything like that. There's a lot of room and a lot of comfort in economy class, but it also comes with some services. So in business class, we have complimentary Wi-Fi. We still have complimentary Wi-Fi in economy class when you're on board the train. Instead of the meal service being included in your fare, you'll have the opportunity to order from cart service that's pushed through the car during the, the trip. And of course the meals would, would match the time of the day. There is uh, power outlets available at every seat and free baggage as well to, to uh, bring your baggage 
onto the train with you. The seating configuration is a little different than what we find in business class. So it's two and two instead of one and two. And like business class, we have the ability to create a section for families or groups of four to travel together and make sure that uh, um, the seating configurations match the, 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 the group that uh, is traveling. Now, the, the, the beverage service and the cart service, as I said, so very similar to what you would have when you're on board an airplane and economy class as the cart moves through. So everything is available but uh, for purchase uh, once you're on board. All right, so I'm going to move into the long distance trains, and these ones really uh, will take up the rest of the time that we're, we're, we're going to be chatting about our services. And uh, traveling overnight on a train, I find, is a very unique experience. So hopefully the next couple of slides will make it easier for you to wrap your head around what the experience is like and where these trains travel across the country. So the first overnight train I want to spend some time on is called the Ocean. And the Ocean connects Montreal and Quebec or French Canada to Halifax and Nova Scotia and the maritime uh, part of our country, excuse me. So for folks traveling on these trains, um, once you get onto the long distance trains, it really is about the scenery and also what's happening on board the train. But as this train travels along uh, the route, you're gonna be traveling along the shorelines of the Atlantic when you're in the Maritimes. When the train gets into Quebec, it's traveling along the shoreline of the St. Lawrence River and the Seaway. The train also will travel through um, many different forests over different rivers. And in the fall in particular, it's a stunning route to take to take in all of the different fall foliage that we have uh, available in this part of the country. Not only is it about seeing the landscapes, but also the different cities that we travel through. So I mentioned the train runs from Montreal to Halifax. There is also a stop in Quebec City. So there's a great opportunity to use this train to connect from Quebec City into the Maritime. So it provides a lot of different options for unique itineraries to showcase Quebec first and then the Maritimes afterwards, or you can do that in reverse starting in the Maritimes. And then lastly, once you get into uh, Atlantic Canada or what we call the Maritimes, um, it's a beautiful region and a region you have to go and visit. You have to spend a number of nights in but this region is dotted really with charming little seaside towns along the coastal region uh, of Nova Scotia and provides a lot of great opportunities to create some really unique itineraries. So just to summarize a little bit about this trip. So it's just short of 24 hours, 22 to 24 hours uh, in either direction, connecting Montreal and Halifax, traveling through the provinces of Quebec, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Um, really what this ends up becoming is almost a moving hotel because we depart Montreal in the evening just before 7 p.m. And right off the bat, we'll offer dinner service in the dining car. Uh, the following morning, we'll have breakfast and lunch before arriving in Halifax that afternoon. And if you're traveling westbound out of Halifax, we depart at noon with lunch delivered upon departure. Dinner would be served later that night. And the nice thing about this train is it arrives into Montreal you're going to have breakfast and it's almost like once you leave the train station you're walking out of a hotel in montreal you've slept overnight on board the train you had your breakfast and now you're ready to tackle the streets in montreal so again to summarize uh, the train is traveling through montreal quebec city moncton is in new brunswick and moncton kind of serves as the gateway to all of the maritime provinces to pei different uh, attractions and activities in new brunswick and then on to halifax as well So what's it look like on board? The onboard accommodations that we have would be in a car we call the Renaissance car. And each car has 10 different bedrooms. Six of those bedrooms are equipped with showers and six are just uh, regular bathrooms without a shower. So you can request showers and the uh, Vacations by Rail staff definitely will try to um, acquire rooms that do have showers when they're booking. Um, booking earlier than later always makes that a bit easier if you do want to shower. I find a lot of people that spend just one night on the train may elect to wait and shower when they get off the, off, off the train, but just want to mention there are showers in some of the rooms. And the typical layup of the room would be, this is a nighttime configuration, I'll show you the daytime in a moment, but an upper and lower bed, which is pretty similar in terms of how you would experience an overnight train anywhere in the world. 
and then an ensuite uh, restroom. And as I said, some of those rooms would have showers, some do not. So this is the shot of the, the daytime configuration. Uh, this picture was taken when the train was in Montreal through the window. So from outside the train, looking inside. And during the day, there's this large couch, comfortable couch that makes up the space. There is storage in the closet directly across and uh, different cupboards and areas to store some of your goods. Um, anybody bringing on a suitcase, so a small carry-on size suitcase would fit in these rooms and they would fit underneath of the, the bench seating or the couch seating that we see there. And then at night, what happens and during dinner, our crew will come in and they'll turn down the, the nighttime service. And um, you would have the lower bed, as you see here, and an upper bed, which is brought down from the ceiling above. And now you have a better uh, perspective of the toilet, into, or sorry, the door into the private ensuite toilet that's attached to the room as well. So these rooms are not large rooms, but they're very functional, very comfortable, and everything you really need for that 24 hour journey on board the train would be provided there in the room to see. Now, um, just a summary. Um, so we do have ensuite toilets within all of the cabins with vanities, hair dryers, and showers available on, on the Quest. There uh, is limited control to uh, um, manage the temperature in the room with fans for circulation. Uh, there are power adapters in every room. So if you need any um, devices to be that need access to power during the trip, whether that's for a sleep app machine or, or rechargeable devices, electronic devices, you have that in the room. There is turn down service provided during dinner and the beds are put away every morning by our attendants during breakfast. And anytime you have a bed on any of our trains, the meal uh, service is inclusive. And there is also access to a social car, which we call the club car on this train. So what does the dining car look like? This would be the, the dining car on the ocean. It's a different car than we use on the Canadian. So I'll show you that in a moment. And we have the ability to welcome uh, travelers that are traveling um, as a couple or um, in a group of two or we have the four tops as well. So passengers have the ability <clears throat> to choose uh, in terms of uh, their, their travel party. And in addition to the dining car, I mentioned there is the social car, and this would be located in the center of the train. And in the club car, not only does it serve kind of as a lounge car, so it's an area where you can get out of your room, move around, mix and mingle with other passengers, uh, but we also do have Wi-Fi on this train as well. So that would make up the club car there. All right, so the Canadian, the Canadian really is the flagship train that we operate um, across the country. And I think for a lot of travelers around the world, it really is a bucket list trip that most people want to experience at some point during their life. Now, this is a four night and a four day trip connecting, as you see, Vancouver, the Rocky Mountains in Jasper, Edmonton, Saskatoon, Winnipeg, and finally Toronto. But you have the ability to shorten the trip. So you can do a one night trip if you wanted, a four night trip, a two night trip, a three night trip. And there's a lot of varied itineraries that the Vacations by Rail team has created that really allow you to showcase all of what Canada has to offer in addition to experiencing a couple of nights on board the train. And there's a lot of reasons that people take the Canadian. Um, I think really, first and foremost, it's about seeing the Canadian scenery, but in the slides to, to follow, you'll see there's lots going on board the train as well that really complement what you see outboard, or sorry, outside the train and also inside. Um, but as I said, the scenery really is number one. And depending on where you are as you work your way across the, the country, every day really does showcase a different part of the country. So what you see maybe today will be very different than what you'll see tomorrow and on day three. So just to show you a couple of shots, this would be just outside of uh, Kamloops, British Columbia. So it's kind of in the middle of British Columbia. This part of British Columbia is more arid, it's almost desert-like in certain sections, and uh, very different from what you would see a couple of hours later when you work your way into the Rocky Mountains. Uh, this would be a shot just prior to getting into the Rocky Mountains in the wintertime and traveling through the Rocky Mountains and just this part of the country in the winter can be quite stunning. It really is like a Christmas postcard with uh, pine trees caked in in snow. You know, if you can travel through this region during a, a snowstorm, I think you're really lucky to, to see uh, the scenery in all its glory. But it's beautiful in the summer as well. 
as we get into Jasper National Park and the Rocky Mountains, this is a shot taken from the dome car of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, and it's not only about the mountains and the scenery, but you're going to see a lot of wildlife as you make your way through the National Park. So it's very common to see bears and elk and uh, mountain sheep, mountain goats. So a big part of the trip as you're working through the Rocky Mountains. Now the prairies. The Prairies don't get enough credit, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this would be going through Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. And what's really different about the prairie provinces compared to going through the mountains is you get this large, vast open sky. And the prairies are famous for beautiful sunsets, beautiful sunrises. In the summertime, I love being up in the dome car and catching maybe a, a powerful thunderstorm roll through the area, watching lightning and, and, and things like that. So. The prairies should not be underestimated. They are beautiful, but they're very different from what you would see as you make your way through the Rocky Mountains. And sometimes people are surprised to know that the prairies aren't as flat and quote unquote boring as they think. There's lots of variations to the terrain. So this would be in uh, Manitoba as the train's making its way through really a river valley and over different coolies. And uh, again, you still get that open sky, but there is varied landscape as you make your way through the Rocky Mountains. In Northern Ontario, we travel through uh, what's known as the Canadian Shield. So this really is um, terrain made up of granite rock. It's some of the oldest rock in the planet. And there's thousands of lakes and billions of trees. And this shot here uh, is our Heinz commercial, uh, Heinz Ketchup commercial. No, uh, kidding. And I always uh, kind of uh, fret whether or not I should include this shot because I think the ketchup steals the, the, the shot a little bit, but it's not. It's really about the scenery. And what this picture does is it really shows you what the experience is like inboard the train. You can't be anywhere or doing anything without making sure you have your camera with you. So during breakfast, during lunch, during dinner, there's always something to see outboard the train. And this would be, as I said, a shot of the Canadian Shield. So you've got thousands of trees. And if you can travel in September or October, you're really going to see all of the different colors that make up the beautiful fall foliage season. And then um, as we travel a little bit further, getting into the larger cities. Um, we also have Toronto. So the Canadian not only showcases the very best of the scenery that we have across Canada, but it's also connecting some of the major cities as well, as I mentioned with Vancouver and Toronto and a few others that um, make your, that are found in Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba. So just a bit of a summary about the Canadian. So I mentioned it travels between Vancouver and Toronto through the, you know, the provinces of Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and BC. Uh, the total duration of the full journey is four days and four nights on board the train, but you can customize that to make shorter trips. The train does operate year round with two weekly departures. And in the summertime, we have a third additional departure that travels between Vancouver and the Rocky Mountains. There's two classes of service that I'm gonna speak about today. Um, and that would be sleeper plus class, and there's a variety of different options in sleeper plus class. And I'll get into that in a moment. Or we have our first class luxurious product called prestige class. And the onboard amenities include freshly prepared meals in the dining car. There's different activity cars known as our dome or lounge cars with service and different activities available. So to start off, I'm gonna show you what the accommodations look like. And as I mentioned, in Sleeper Plus class, we have a few different options. Um, the entry level price point into Sleeper Plus class would be known as our berth. And on the car diagram, berths would be the yellow section. So there's only three different sections or six uh, spots for passengers in our berth sections. The cabin for two is the, the uh, most popular um, class of service that we would have in Sleeper Class and the most numerous number of bedrooms would be offered in a cabin for two throughout the train. And then we also have the ability to welcome single travelers on board the train in our cabins for one at the rear of the car. Now, uh, there are public restrooms in each car, but the cabins for two and cabins for one do have their own toilets within the rooms themselves. So I'll just show you what these accommodations look like. So this would be a berth during the day, and there's two benches that face each other that make up the space. One bench per passenger would be the way that uh, the configuration would work. And during the day, there isn't any privacy for a berth. So these are an entry level price point, as I mentioned, partly to do with the fact that there isn't complete privacy during the daytime. At nighttime, what happens, these uh, seats will pull down 
and you'll have a lower bed and an upper bed that comes out of the ceiling. There is privacy at night by way of the curtain that you see here, and it would close over the area. Uh, so the upper bed is completely sectioned off from the lower bed. These are very comfortable, um, but as I said, they just don't really have the privacy during the day, and they don't have their own restroom facilities. But what they would use, keeping in mind that the berths are the yellow sections, they would be just adjacent to the public restrooms in the park. Next up, and the most popular option that we have in Sleeper Plus would be our cabin for two. So this would be a shot of the cabin during the day with the uh, two chairs you see. Uh, these chairs can move around in the cabin so you can position them in front of the, the large window that makes up the space. The toilet or water closet is just behind the door in the corner there. And while you can't see it, there is a large mirrored vanity with running water and all of the amenities that you'd really expect from a hotel room with towel, soap, lotion, things like that are provided and prepared or uh, restocked daily by our staff. What happens in the evening when you're in the dining car uh, having dinner, our crew will come in and what they do is they fold the chairs down to the ground and you're left with um, the upper and lower bed configuration that makes up the cabin for two for the overnight. So the, the bed here, the lower bed, at the foot of the bed would be the large window. There isn't a window for uh, the passenger sleeping up top, but these are very comfortable rooms, very comfortable beds. There is a, a safety harness that's attached to the top bunk just in case somebody uh, tosses and turns too much we'll catch them before they they end up on the ground below but very comfortable uh, to take in uh, you know whether that is one two three or four nights while on board the train lastly i wanted to show the cabin for one so this is great because we can welcome an individual passenger on board the train without having to charge a single supplement so this picture makes this room seem a little more compact than it actually is but basically all of the beds on the train are about six feet long and this room is probably about six or seven feet wide. So the daytime configuration would be a love seat that you see on the right. Everything is very compact on the train. Space is always at a premium. So this would either serve as the toilet or the footrest within the room. And you can't see it, but there is a vanity and sink as well in the cabin for one. So all of the amenities that we have in a cabin for one are the same in the cabin for two. And at nighttime, the entire space becomes a bed from one end of the cabin to the other. So as I mentioned, this bed is about six feet long. You can see now the, the sink and the vanity in the corner of the room. The thing I like about the cabins for one is you're sleeping alongside the window. So at any point during the evening, you can pop the, the window open or in the morning, see where you are and take in the scenery while you're still lying in bed, which is uh, a nice plus. There is one shower located in each car and we'll provide fresh shower kits on a daily basis delivered to our passengers' rooms. And the shower is available on a first come first serve basis. There's a large changing area as you see here, and then the shower itself. Um, so there is showers available for our passengers during the trip on board the train with us. So just to summarize a little bit what a cabin for one or a cabin for two would make up, and that's the most popular cabin type that Vacations by Rail will be booking in addition to Prestige Class, which we'll show you in a second. So large windows to enjoy the scenery, uh, from both cabins for one or cabins for two. Doors that lock from the inside, so total privacy when you want it. Um, each of these rooms do have, or both of the type, room types have vanities with um, sink and potable water available anywhere on board the train, but in your room specifically. Ensuite toilets are available with uh, limited temperature control and fans for circulation. These rooms, just like on the ocean, do have power adapters in every room to run any uh, electronic devices you may have. Turn down service is done during dinner and beds are put away at breakfast and there is that shared shower available for everybody in the car. Next up is prestige class. So this is uh, the top end of the experience on the Canadian and the top end uh, of the, uh, of, the any of any services, sorry, that we offer on board the Canadian. These rooms are larger, uh, they're more contemporary. They were recently refurbished about five years ago. They include ensuite showers within every room. And um, prestige class isn't just about the room itself, but it's also about the service that we deliver. And I'll show you that um, now. But to start off with what we have, as I mentioned, the larger room. So there's a leather sectional couch that makes up the space during the day, a much larger window than you'll find in Sleeper Plus. So you can enjoy the scenery when you're in this much larger room. We have a flat screen television with, uh, on, um, uh, with preloaded movies. So we don't have Wi-Fi on the Canadian or satellite service. So uh, there is uh, some video on demand, basically, that we provide uh, 
uh, passengers want to watch a movie in the evening. We have a mini bar or cooling station where um, some drinks can be stored during the, the day or during the trip. And a larger rest uh, washroom, sorry, with a larger vanity and a private shower in the room with heated floors. So the, the ability to uh, you know, not have the group shower that you would have in a sleeper plus room, but private in the ensuite that you would have in the prestige room. So just another shot of the, the corner leather sectional couch. To give you a bit of an idea in terms of how large these, these rooms are, you could easily have four or five people sit on that couch and there'd be ample room. So these are quite a bit larger than our regular sleeper plus rooms. And behind the, the wall here would be a murky bed where the bed would come out at night. And what we have instead of there being an upper and a lower bed, we now have the ability for passengers to sleep side by side. And it's just between a double and a queen size bed. Um, it's a via rail size bed, but comfortable for two passengers to enjoy uh, the bed and also position in a way so both passengers can look out the window. So it's a great way to start in the morning, perhaps have your concierge attendant deliver some coffee to your room and just slowly wake up enjoying the scenery out the window as the train makes its way through uh, the various parts of the country it is in that particular day. The prestige class is uh, a lot more than just the room. So there's different areas of the train that are specific to prestige class, especially during the summertime. This would be the rear park car or domed observation car. And this area is exclusive to our prestige passengers from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. during the summer months. And after 4 p.m., sleeper plus passengers can get back here. But um, prestige class is very limited in terms of the capacity that we have. So a maximum of 26 passengers would be in prestige class. So it's a very intimate experience that you're getting when you purchase a prestige class experience with us. And in addition to the lounge here, as you work your way to the back of the car, you end up in what we call the bullet lounge. Just an additional area to get out of your, your room, mingle with other passengers, enjoy the scenery in, as I said, a contemporary setting. And uh, just at the uh, kind of behind where the photographer would be standing for this particular shot, you would end up in the dome car. So this is on top the park car. It's the very last car in the train. So if you're looking out the window, you'll see the entire train ahead of you. And uh, this would be exclusive, as I said, for our passengers in prestige class until 4 p.m. every day in the summer. When you're traveling in the off-peak season, so fall and winter, we do have exclusive seating in the dome car for prestige passengers as well. So there's always going to be guaranteed dome seating for our prestige passengers at any time of the year when traveling with us. So to summarize what prestige class is, is um, like I said, it's the luxurious product that we offer on the Canadian. It really is the, the high end, the keynote experience that we have um, without our entire, throughout our entire fleet. Um, we do offer an all-inclusive experience, so not only meals, but all alcoholic beverages. Cabins are much larger with the private ensuite showers. The exclusive access to the park car is a great um, extra perk and additional value during the summertime. Afternoon snacks are delivered to the rooms or to the passengers in the park car, and those could include things like cheese plates, charcuterie, smoked salmon, it varies by day. Um, wherever we've had the ability to enhance the touch points, whether that's uh, higher thread count in our towels, the, the sheets, anywhere, we, we, we definitely have uh, the bathing products um, from the shampoo, lotions, et cetera. We try to make sure the best is available for our prestige passengers and the double size bed. So these really are intended either for passengers that are, are traveling as a couple or perhaps on their own, but um, the, the ability to sleep together is uh, also great for things like honeymoon and anniversaries and special occasions. So just finally with the Canadian, there's a number of different public areas that make up the experience on board the train. So we have a number of different dome cars that are spread throughout the consist of the train. And in these cars, we have different entertainment that's provided during the peak season, which can, which can include musicians, um, informative talks about the regions that the train is traveling in, We'll show movies in the evening. Uh, there's games available. Uh, we have a sparkling Bon Voyage reception as the train departs Toronto, Jasper, and Vancouver. And we also do wine and beer tastings throughout the train, uh, sort of throughout the day uh, um, during the trip. So there is a lot going on inside the train. As I said earlier, it's not really just about looking out the window and 
and, and, and enjoying the scenery. There's lots to take in uh, on board inside the train as well. There's complimentary coffee, tea juice, and snacks available for our passengers. In regards to the dining service, uh, lunch and dinner would be made with reservations. Breakfast is always at leisure. And just an important note to remember, the train is not equipped with Wi-Fi. So here's a shot of the dining car. And uh, all of the food is prepared fresh by chefs that live on board the train. And the menu is changing every single day. So you'll never have the same meal twice. And uh, you're ordering off of a menu with four choices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dinner uh, can range from things like rack of lamb, prime rib, different seafoods, pasta dishes. There's always a vegetarian option included. And we can accommodate any dietary uh, preferences or, or um, specifications. We just need to know in advance. We focus in, uh, uh, on Canadian wines, Canadian beers. Um, so you really have an opportunity to experience some Canadian cuisine, if you will, while you're traveling on board. Our chefs do live on board the train and they are making everything from scratch. So it's a really big part of the experience that a lot of passengers are very impressed with and sometimes blown away by the caliber of the meals that we have on board the train. The dome cars all serve as lounge cars as well. So lounge service or bar service is available from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And this would be the lounge section of one of our dome cars. Upstairs, we have seating for 24 passengers, and these dome cars are open 24 um, 7. You know, it's great to be there in the morning as the sun gets, uh, starts to rise. I've seen the northern lights from the dome car. Um, I mentioned you'll see lots of wildlife from the dome car. And so, a very popular place to sit during the trip. And at the rear of the dome car, we have an activity center where we'll show the movies that I mentioned. We'll do our wine and beer tastings from this section. Uh, you'll find board games, typically available cards, things like that. So. Um, lots of different areas to get out of your cabin and enjoy uh, your fellow passengers while the train makes its way across the country. All right, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Lynn to go over some of the packages that uh, really showcase our trains and Canada extremely well. Thanks, Ryan. So we've heard about Via Rail's amazing trains, the signature routes, those amazing classes of service and the memorable onboard experiences. So there's no doubt this is an immersive experience. So I'm gonna bring it all together and highlight a few of our popular itineraries on VRL. Um, when many people think about a classic overnight rail adventure in Canada, they do think about Via Rail's Canadian, and our Canadian Rockies by Rail is hands down a favorite amongst our travelers. So I'm gonna talk about that one first. Um, this is a seven-day independent rail vacation, which means that everything is planned for you, but you are traveling on your own, setting your own pace as you go. So the route takes you from Vancouver to Jasper, Lake Louise, Banff, and ends in Calgary. And this itinerary really has it all. It has a, an overnight in the coastal city of Vancouver, that one classic overnight rail experience on Via Rail's Canadian, um, visits to those popular Canadian Rockies resort towns. And, and honestly, this is a great trip for any traveler, whether you're new to overnight rail travel or you're a seasoned long distance train traveler. So I'm gonna give you a little bit about this uh, itinerary here. So just to dig into some of the details, you're going to begin in Vancouver. Um, you're gonna have a day at leisure there. And on day two, you're gonna board the Canadian bound for Jasper. So you have that one fantastic night on the train in the accommodations of your choice. And then you're gonna arrive in Jasper where there's time to explore the beautiful town before taking in excursions to the Columbia Icefield and route to Lake Louise. So you're gonna spend a night at Lake Louise before continuing to Banff, home to the hot springs that made, um, put this de destination on the map. And you're gonna have two days to sightsee in Banff. And highlights there include um, a unique gondola ride to the top of Sulphur Mountain um, and other really iconic Banff landmarks. Your vacation concludes with a transfer to Calgary to make your way home. So this is a great introduction to the Canadian Rockies and, um, of course, overnight train travel. So to recap some highlights, they include that memorable overnight journey on Via Rail's Canadian, the Columbia Icefield excursion and Glacier Skywalk, and Banff sightseeing, including a ride on the Banff gondola. So now I'm going to let you in on a little bit of a secret. I'm not an especially big fan of winter. Cold and snow just aren't for me. 
unless I'm in the Canadian Rockies. I absolutely fell in love with winter and winter rail vacations when I was lucky enough to visit the Canadian Rockies in the winter um, about 10 years ago. So I'm pretty sure that you too will fall in love with winter on our Banff and Jasper Winter Magic Tour. So this is a nine day independent rail vacation. It allows you to explore the Canadian winter wonderlands of Banff and Jasper, and it combines that with that cozy, overnight rail adventure on Via Rails Canadian. So your journey is going to begin in Calgary with a transfer to Banff. You're gonna spend three days here exploring the beauty of that national park and the charming town site. And highlights here are going to include an ice walk in Johnston Canyon, wildlife spotting in Banff National Park, and the sleigh ride with Canadian Rockies as your backdrop. I mean, that's so romantic. Um, a scenic coach transfer is going to take you to Jasper for a three night stay. And when you're in Jasper, we've included sightseeing like um, an ice walk through Moline Canyon and a guided tour through the Athabasca Valley. And your tour is going to wrap up with the main event, that overnight rail adventure on Via Rails Canadian. And you're going to arrive in Vancouver with the remainder of your day at leisure to get acquainted with that town as well, and then depart the next day. So now my favorite highlight is, of course, the train ride on Via Rails Canadian. I mean, the winter landscapes in your cozy cabin create the perfect atmosphere for a seasonal journey. But I also really like the Banff Wildlife Tour. It's a three hour tour that takes you to popular landmarks in Banff and offers a great chance to see that wildlife in their natural habitat and learn more about their winter survival habits. And I'm a big fan of the Moline Canyon Ice Walk. It's another really fun activity. Um, you don these special cleats that allow you to confidently walk along the frozen canyon floor. And it offers a great perspective on your natural surroundings. And you're gonna come across some really unique um, sites like uh, waterfalls frozen in time, which I think is pretty incredible. So I highly recommend winter Banff and Jasper winter magic tour. Now some travelers, they want to experience it all. Multiple trains, a variety of destinations and unique experiences. And this next itinerary is just the ticket. It's our across Canada by train itinerary. It's 14 days, it's an independent vacation. So you're, again, everything's arranged for you, but you're traveling on your own and setting your own pace. And um, it includes travel aboard VRL's Canadian, the corridor service and ocean trains on a route that takes you between Vancouver and Halifax. So this is an epic journey across eight provinces, four exciting rail segments. It really is the ultimate Canadian rail adventure. So let's dig into the itinerary just a little bit. Um, you're going to begin in beautiful Vancouver and you're gonna have a free day to explore the city's landmarks. And then the next day you're going to board Via Rails Canadian for your first rail journey. And it's an epic one. It's four nights um, from British Columbia to Ontario. You're gonna have time to enjoy all of those onboard experiences Ryan told us about, dine on delicious meals, meet your fellow travelers and just sit back and really soak in the atmosphere. Uh, the train's going to arrive in Toronto. You're going to have two nights here. Um, there'll be time to explore on your own. And we've also arranged for a spectacular day trip to Niagara Falls for that boat ride to the, the base of the falls. Um, then we're continuing on the all daylight corridor service. We're going to go from Toronto to Montreal. And you're going to have time to explore the legendary attractions there. Um, and after one day and night in the city, you continue by train to Quebec City. And here you're going to visit the historical and modern highlights on a comprehensive sightseeing tour we've put together for you. And then in Quebec City, you board uh, your last train of the trip. It's Via Rails Ocean for that overnight journey to Halifax. Now, you can this this uh, itinerary allows you to pamper yourself with first class accommodations, delicious meals, and access to exclusive lounge cars, and, and all while viewing Canada's um, changing scenery as you're going coast to coast and watching that topography change. Uh, you're going to stay in centrally located hotels. We've arranged great comprehensive sightseeing tours to get you acquainted with each city. And of course, there's ample time at leisure so you can explore on your own as well and see and do those things that are most important to you. So going along with our regional theme, if Eastern Canada intrigues you, we recommend Quebec to the Maritimes. Um, 
It includes French culture. It shows off Atlantic seaside towns. And it is a six-day independent uh, vacation. And it's a great introduction to this region of Canada. Your journey is going to start in Montreal, and that's home to a lot of legendary attractions from stunning basilicas to, um, you know, the Olympics were held there. So there's the Olympic Park that still has um, a lot of icons from that, that time. Um, you have two days to explore that city before traveling on Via Rail's corridor service train to Quebec City. And uh, in Quebec City, there'll be time for some sightseeing as well and really soak in that French culture. Um, then it's on Via Rail's Ocean for that overnight trip to Halifax. And uh, you conclude your time in Halifax. It's rich in history. You have time to discover that coastal paradise and take some optional sightseeing tours if you'd like. So highlights of this itinerary include that classic overnight rail journey on Via Rail's Ocean, um, sightseeing tours in Montreal and Quebec City, and free time in Halifax. So what if you could have the best of both worlds? So a rail vacation through the Canadian Rockies and a breathtaking Alaska cruise, those go hand in hand. And let's talk about one of our more, more popular itineraries, and that would be uh, Canada's Rockies and Alaska cruise. So this is a 16 day rail and sail vacation. It begins in Calgary and you uh, transfer to the resort town of Banff on arrival. And here we include a sightseeing tour to quintessential Banff sites. We include that gondola ride to the top of Sulphur Mountain and um, plenty of other sightseeing to fill your two days that you're going to be spending in Banff. And then you're going to go by scenic transfer to Lake Louise for a night and then on to Jasper for another two nights. And we've packed this time with sightseeing to give you um, a taste of each destination. Then we have that wonderful overnight rail experience on Via Rail's Canadian that takes us out of the Canadian Rockies and into Vancouver, where you have time to explore the city before embarking on a seven night Alaska cruise where your ports of call include Ketchikan, um, Juneau, and Skagway. So here are just some of the images from uh, highlights of the trip. You have your Holland America cruise here, Via Rail, Vancouver, and um, of course, the inside passage of Alaska. So highlights of this trip include not only that great overnight rail experience, but incredible sightseeing um, in the Canadian Rockies, as well as that seven night cruise. And the last itinerary I want to talk about, it's, it's really for people who are looking for that wildlife, unique bucket list experience. Um, Ryan kind of teased it out at the beginning. It's our Polar Bears and Churchill Adventure, which includes uh, that wonderful rail experience up north between Winnipeg and Churchill. So this eight day trip begins and ends in Winnipeg. It includes two nights on Via Rail's Winnipeg Churchill train into Canada's subarctic. And it does offer that once in a lifetime experience with Churchill's polar bears. So in Churchill, the adventure really centers around the excitement of polar bear viewing. And this is done from an official tundra buggy, which you can see right down here. Uh, you get two full day tundra buggy buggy safaris at the Churchill Wildlife Management Area. And here, this is where the polar bears wait for the Hudson Bay to freeze over so they can cross it. There'll be plenty of time to watch these mammals and other Arctic wildlife in their natural environment on this itinerary. And while the polar bears do steal the show, there is a dog sledding adventure included, as well as plenty of time to learn about the history of Churchill and explore the town. And then you're going to return to Winnipeg, Winnipeg by plane. And there's time for one last night. You're going to have lots of memories to keep you warm as you think about that wildlife adventure. So to recap the highlights, obviously we have that cozy train ride north from Winnipeg to Churchill, where you'll spend two nights on the train, two full days of polar bear viewing by, on a tundra buggy, a dog sledding adventure, and access to restricted trails. And of course, uh, on this trip, it is an independent vacation, but you're, you're going to be surrounded with expert adventure guides to accompany you on those wildlife journeys so you know exactly what to look for and, and understand um, the, the natural habitats of these polar bears. 
Now, the wonderful thing about these independent vacations is there are ways to upgrade your experience and enhance your vacation package to suit your vacation goals. You can upgrade your experience on the train. You can add excursions, extra hotel nights, or just upgrade your room at the hotels. Each independent package includes different options. So we recommend talking to a Vacations by Rail specialist who can help you with those additional ideas. So now it's time for another polling question. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. Here it is. It is what type of Canada vacation would you like to have? So we have some selections up there. They're regionally focused options, um, Western Canada, Eastern Canada, coast to coast, so you can enjoy all of the trains, um, wildlife like the, the polar bears, or a rail and cruise vacation. So we'll leave this open for about 15 more seconds. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close the poll. And it looks like 40% of our attendees are interested in coast-to-coast -coast vacations and 26% are regionally focused in Western Canada and definitely interested in other options as well. So if you'd like to learn more about our Canada Rail Vacations featuring Via Rail, you can request one of our brochures by calling 877-929-7245, or you can order online or download a brochure at vacationsbyrail.com. And to make a reservation, any of our rail specialists would be happy to assist you. They can be reached at 877-929-7245. And as an interesting little tip, the rail specialist who assists you with your first call is the one who will be with you through uh, your vacation. So any questions leading up from the time you book until uh, you return home, they're, they're um, available to assist you. So now we're at the Q&A portion of our, um, of our session, and we have so many questions. Ryan, do you have some time to answer some yeah, of these? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. I'm looking forward to these. Yeah, there's, there's some great ones in here. So let's see. Um, does Canadian Rail still run the snow train? So uh, via rail, we, we, we don't really have um, an official train called the snow train, but um, it seems like over the past number of years, uh, the Canadian, especially the segment traveling between Vancouver and Jasper, has become known as the snow train. Uh, a number of years ago, we're probably going back about 15 years ago, there used to be a train that ran between Edmonton and Jasper called the snow train. Uh, but I would say the, the version of our service today that is most commonly referred to as the snow train would be between Vancouver and Jasper. Okay, perfect. Um, do Canada's passenger trains have their own dedicated tracks or do they share tracks with freight rail like in the States? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, we do share the, the rail and the track system that we operate on with Canada Rail. Canadian National CNR. Um, you know, full disclosure, we have had some issues in the past keeping our trains on time, but just before the pandemic in 2019 for the Canadian uh, specifically, we did revamp our schedule, which has really allowed us to um, improve the reliability of the train. So schedule, from a scheduling perspective, um, I'm very confident now with this new schedule that we will get people where they need to be uh, pretty close to the scheduled arrival time. So the issue of really late trains is something that we've been able to do successfully and it's not such an issue today. Perfect. Um, we have a number of questions regarding um, travel restrictions being lifted in Canada and, and obviously that's pandemic related. Do you have all travel restrictions been lifted as a Canadian? Um, yeah. Not really. So maybe just an overview from a Canadian perspective, and this would be my perspective, uh, not an official perspective, but, um, you know, mask wearing is pretty much mandatory in most indoor places in a lot of parts of the country. 
Um, there are also vaccine mandates. I think they're now in every province. So to do things like to go to a restaurant, um, to maybe go to a concert, museums, things like that, they are asking for proof of vaccination. And then I mentioned the same for on board the train. So the one thing to consider though, is anybody that's listening to this presentation that's living outside of Canada, um, you need to be vaccinated to get into the country. So, um, you know, with that in mind, you know, once you get into the country, you're, you're pretty much covered to do any of the activities that are available um, that Lynn's discussed, the trains that I've discussed. Um, and I personally, this again, my opinion, I don't think that we'll see that going anywhere next year, um, at least not anytime soon. So probably a good idea to assume that you will have to be vaccinated to get into Canada for a little while, just to avoid any disappointment, you know, so you're not planning something that may not come to fruition. So um, I think it uh, is it's an expectation that will probably be there for, for a good chunk of 2022. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Um, we have a couple of questions about dining on board the trains, um, in particular regarding vegetarian and vegan options. Are there options available? Yeah, so actually I'm plant-based myself and within the, the set menus on the Canadian, one of the four options that you'll choose from off of the menu for every meal is actually a vegan or plant-based meal. So that's already included within um, the set options that we have. So it's not a request that needs to be made because it is already guaranteed. Um, so that is included. And as I said, anything beyond that, um, that would require special attention. Just make sure you let the DBR team know, the Taking by Rail team know, so they can notify us and uh, we'll make the, the proper adjustments and requirements to make sure we have the right ingredients on board to accommodate any passenger. Thanks. Um, is there any commentary during, during the journey? There is in the summer. Um, well, I'll say this, I'll guarantee that it is, there is some in the summer. Keep in mind this train, the Canadian in particular, um, and the ocean to, to Halifax, between Halifax and Montreal, they kind of double up as a leisure service, but also transportation. And with the fact, or due to the fact that we have bedrooms on board those two trains, the narration is really kept for during the day and it's limited so that we're not disturbing people in their cabins. Um, typically in the dome cars, we have a position um, for one of our crew members called an activity coordinator. And that narration would be provided by them in the dome car. So it's not really something that would be shared throughout the entire train. There are announcements made um, throughout the entire train to do with station stops and things like that, but more narration about where the train is located and the regions we're passing to through would be limited to the dome cars themselves and provided by the activity coordinator or the, any of the attendants in the, the dome cars can provide some limited narration. But it's not the same as if anybody's traveled with Rocky Mountaineer, which is really a leisure train and not a mixed train. Uh, we have, um, like I said, limited narration instead of it being kind of full on like you'd expect with a, a, an actual leisure based uh, product. Thanks. Um, are the trains wheelchair accessible? So on the Canadian and the ocean and the corridor, yes, they are. It just depends where you're sitting. So sleeper plus class on the Canadian does not have a wheelchair accessible area, but in the prestige section, we do have one accessible cabin on the train. So um, one thing I didn't mention, the cars that we operate on the Canadian were built in the 40s and 50s, or sorry, the 50s. So you can imagine accessibility wasn't really top of mind like it is now. Um, so those cars in Sleeper Plus um, would not be able to welcome somebody in a wheelchair, but we do have the ability in the park car um, for, for the one bedroom. And on the ocean, there is a wheelchair accessibility in um, a variety of cars on that train. And then in the corridor, in economy or in business class, we have the ability uh, um, with tie downs in, in both of those types of cars and both services to welcome uh, passengers that are um, using wheelchairs. Thanks. Um, if I get a private cabin, is room service available? Unfortunately, no. And that's just uh, due to the, um, the narrow hallways and just the constraints of the train itself. 
it's very difficult to deliver food to rooms. Now we will make the exception if there is somebody that has limited mobility, let's say they're not in a wheelchair, but they, they may have a hard time moving around the train or if the dining car is too far. Well, we, we will make the odd exception, but in sleeper plus class, there is no room service set into the service design that we've uh, created at this point. In prestige class, uh, we won't deliver meals to the room, but this, there's um, a light continental breakfast that can be delivered to the room. Drinks and afternoon snacks can be delivered to the room. The problem we have with prestige class is there isn't a proper table that you would be able to put food on. So it would actually kind of be a little cumbersome to have any meals in those cars. There is a coffee table in the prestige uh, bedrooms that a small um, tray could be put on with some of those snacks and smaller meal items. But uh, basically the, the food service is, is meant to be uh, delivered in the dining cars. Great. Um... Are alcoholic beverages included at meal time on overnight trains? Only for prestige class. Um, for sleeper plus class, uh, the alcoholic beverages, wine, beer, et cetera, whether you're in the dining car or in our dome cars would be available for purchase. Thank you. Um, we have time for a couple more. Um, do you have to carry your luggage on and off the train? So the carry-on luggage uh, that you would need for the duration of time on board the train is um, handled by passengers themselves. Now, if somebody needs specific assistance, our crew is definitely there to help them with that, especially getting on and off the train and going up the steps. Um, keep in mind the rooms, you know, they're, they're smaller rooms. So it's just kind of the nature of overnight rail travel. So it's important when you're planning for, you know, whether it's seven, 10, 15 nights in Canada, and a few of those nights are for rail travel only, um, to make sure you're bringing the appropriate size suitcase for the overnight time on the train. And what that means is just to kind of reference, I think airline travel, which is a little more common, um, a carry-on size suitcase that can fit in an overhead compartment on an airplane is a perfect size that you can bring with you inside to your cabin. And that would be available or in terms of one suitcase per passenger. If you have anything larger than that, the room itself isn't really equipped to hide the, um, the suitcase under a bed or in the limited storage that we have. So it's really important to bring a carry-on size suitcase for the duration of time you'll spend on board the train. The check baggage, any larger bags, that would be handled by our baggage team and those bags would be stored in the baggage car. And then when you get to the destination that you're traveling to, you would pick up your suitcase just as you would at the airport from a luggage carousel in one of our stations. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, last question. Um, how do the berths on the Canadian work if traveling with three people on one of the tours? Yeah, so um, I mentioned that we have the, the capacity for six passengers in each car for berths. Um, so there's kind of three sections designed for two people. If there were three people traveling together, there is a chance that the, the third person to, um, who might be on their own in one of those sections could be matched with another passenger. And that's why it was important when I mentioned the fact that the upper and lower berths are completely closed off from each other during the overnight. So if you're in the lower berth, you don't have access to the upper berth. So for three people traveling, two people would share one section, an upper and a lower. And then across the aisleway, there would be the third passenger either in the lower or the upper bed um, during the overnight period. Um, I think it's important to remember that during the day, you spend very little time in your seating configuration because you're in the dining car or in the dome car most of the time. So it's not too common for, I think, passengers to mingle with each other in the upper or lower berths during the day because they're in the public areas. And then at night, they would have that ability to be completely sectioned off with their own privacy if there was a stranger, say, sharing that space with them. Thanks, Ryan. Um, we have many more questions, but our time is up. So um, those questions will be handed off to our rail specialists who will be in touch with you personally to ensure that those and any other questions are answered. 
So I want to take uh, this time to thank you all for attending this session and thank Ryan for joining us and, and really giving us a great overview of all of the chains and everything we need to know about Canada um, and its chains. Um, Ryan, why don't you go ahead and close for us? Yeah, well, I'd pretty much like to echo the same thing. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Via Rail. And, and I hope uh, that we'll have an opportunity to welcome you on board uh, maybe sometime next year or if not next year in 2023. And thanks to Lynn and the Vacations by Rail team for the service that they provide um, our passengers and uh, showcasing Canada with some really phenomenal um, uh, itineraries using our trains. So, you're in great hands with the Vacations by Rail team. And uh, like I said, we just hope to welcome you sooner or later. Thanks so much. Everyone have a great day. Thanks, Lynn.